Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm really thrilled to have an opportunity to speak to you all. Um, I am an educator by training and by experience. I started my career in middle school classrooms. And uh, it's Adobe's fault I left the classroom. I took a workshop in digital storytelling and discovered Premiere and thought, there are new ways to communicate and to teach students to communicate. Uh, and have then launched on a career really looking at the intersection of design, technology, and learning. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with other educators and to have a chance to engage with you all today. So I wanted to start by just talking about the importance of creativity for Adobe. And I think you all know, as based on the, the presentations you've heard, the orientation of this conference, that Adobe really recognizes the vital need to nurture and foster creativity in the classroom. And we do that in a number of different ways. Uh, you've certainly heard lots of reasons why, whether it's economic reasons, preparing students for the future, really ensuring that all of our students can engage in creativity broadly. <coughs> I think one of the, the other important pieces is that we no longer see the creative class as limited. Adobe's made a lot of transformations in the last few years, and one of them is that we're defining creativity and what it means to be creative much more broadly. It's no longer just designers, or photographers, or folks who are engaged in creating digital video, but it's everyone. It's anyone who has an idea and wants to express it. If you have an idea and you want it to be heard, the way to do that now is digital. It's visual. It's social. And it requires a different kinds of skills, and it also requires a different kind of confidence and willingness to engage in the world. And so I think as we look at what the future looks like, we need to think of creativity much more broadly and to invite students to participate at very young ages. Adobe Youth Voices uh, is a program that's been mentioned earlier, and one of the really powerful things that they do is show the ways in which students use digital media to change the world. I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to meet two young students from India uh, who were, they came to the Adobe office as part of a tour of the United States, and they were sharing some of the ways in which they were trying to change their community. They lived in a small neighborhood in Calcutta, they had no wet running water. There was no map of their community, so it was hard for anybody to understand how to serve this neighborhood. And the girls weren't continuing with their education. These were the problems that these students wanted to solve. And they did this through digital media. They created stories to tell. They shared them with their community. They shared them with government officials. And they began to make real progress in the issues that were facing their community. And what was particularly humbling to me is that these students were 11 years old. They defined themselves as activists. They wanted to change the world. Digital media was simply one of the ways in which they were going to do that. And I found that incredibly humbling. The work I do is easy compared to what they're doing. And to be able to give those students power, tools that empower them to have a voice, to make change in their world, that's really wonderful work to be doing. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what my team does at Adobe. We're somewhat unusual. We're mostly former educators. We're folks with lots of experience in the field. And our focus has been to really design a thought leadership platform that Adobe can use more broadly to talk about creativity and education. And you've seen the results of that here already. I am really grateful to see my colleagues sharing some of the videos that we created, sharing the resources and the research that we've done. Even the theme of the conference, uh, creativity is, is no longer an elective. It's the future. It's one that my team has created. And so I'm really honored to see that this has resonated and been valuable and helpful to folks within broader Adobe and the community. We focus on achieving those goals as well. So we created a large platform for the ideas, the things that we believe about creativity. And my team is charged with putting that into practice. How do we make that actually happen in classrooms around the world? And we do that in three ways. We've got industry-leading tools and services. We create communities and build professional learning. And then finally, we also publish and share curriculum and certification for students. And so we'll spend some time talking about the way we make some of our ideas around creativity take off in reality. So the first are our tools. We're lucky to have such amazing tools that students can use to communicate in so many ways. What we tried to do here was create a map that would show what do people do with our tools and the various ways in which you can do that. And I think one of the things that's particularly exciting people was mentioned in the video actually. Our tools are industry standard. That if we're preparing students for the workforce, we're preparing them with tools they can actually use and that they'll, be, they'll need day one when they start a new job. There's some wonderful tools out there that allow you to 
uh, edit photos, to make videos that are quick, that are easy to use. What we often see is those are stepping stones. That's the place where students start. But they quickly run into a ceiling. Instagram is wonderful, great to add filters and to share that. But what students begin to find is they bump into the, the constraints. They don't have the option to do everything that they see. For students, their culture right now is visual, it's digital. It's happening online. The way in which they engage with the world is different than the way in which we have. And they want to be, create, to be able to create the same kinds of sophisticated media that they see. And we're very excited to be able to provide those tools that help students actually do that. The backbone of our work in creativity is the education exchange. You've heard a lot about it today, or over the last few days. It started three years ago, a small group of educators. We were really focused on teaching resources. It was where we published our curriculum. We had about 10,000 users. It was great, people downloaded our curriculum, that was fine. But what we discovered as we dove deeper into the exchange and really looked at what do educators want to do, we found that as much as they wanted to download resources, they wanted, they wanted to interact with each other. They followed each other. They looked at what someone had produced and created and shared, and then they wanted to see what else they had done. They wanted to see what they were going to do again in the future. And so the evolution of the exchange has been really interesting over the last two years. It's unrecognizable. If you haven't logged in in a little, bit, in a little while, over the last year, we've completely revamped the exchange. And our goal has been to make it more social, to make it easier for educators to find each other. We saw the creative class video, I think, twice now. And the first one of the things that stands out to me is they talk about being alone in your room. A lot of the educators that we work with may be alone in their schools. They may be the only person who teaches digital video or who teaches uh, digital literacy. And so those folks want to connect with each other. They want to find other like-minded educators. So we built a really strong community component to the exchange. We also last spring, last year, launched the professional development section of our site. Really amazing. We've had 35,000 participants in our professional development today. And then we launched a discussion area, also a really vibrant part of the education exchange. For our professional development, we started with just workshops. And they were focused on creativity and education. How do we engage educators to, on these particular topics? We then launched Adobe Generation, a really fantastic MOOC, a way for folks to learn. We've run that in Europe, in North America, in Australia, New Zealand, really as an attempt to try and provide it to folks in different time zones so it's easily accessible. Fantastic topics, we've seen great participation and results from those courses and continue to run those today. We then began to launch additional courses. We ran a train the trainer session for educators, really designed to build capacity within our customers, so that you would have an opportunity to help educators who taught our tools to other educators understand best practices, to share those, and to keep their knowledge current. All these resources are free. They're on the education exchange. They're designed to be open to anyone, so we invite you to participate and engage with us. Then just in December, we launched a series of webinars. And those have been really interesting. They're run by educators for educators. There's one coming up on April 10th that focuses on uh, Acrobat. The morning sessions are for people who are beginners, who are just starting out. They don't really know what the tool is or how to use it, but they want to hear from another educator about what they're doing. Then the, the session that happens later in the day is for experts, for folks who have who've spent some time in the product and want to figure out what's the next step, what are some of the other things I can do. What we've seen with these uh, webinars is that we certainly get folks who attend in person, but 10 times as many people join us later on the education exchange. They're all available to access any time. It's a great way to learn the tools. They're half an hour, so they're short. They're really designed to be quick, to the point, and led by educators. In terms of what's coming up next with, the, with our professional development, there's some really phenomenal things. We're launching our next Train the Trainer model. That's going to take place in June. We have uh, some an, an animation and motion MOOC that's happening in April and then an app design uh, at MOOC that's happening in May. So some really fantastic things coming up. I encourage you to participate. They're going to be great. Have any of you participated in any of the professional development? Jeff, that's it. No one else? Oh, great. Fantastic. Well, please join us. The 35,000 other educators who are engaged in this professional development would love to hear from you. 
The other thing that's happening next for us with professional development is we want to make it possible for educators to teach each other. We're happy to continue to provide professional development and professional development that's really aligned with our messaging around creativity, that helps people teach our tools, but we would love to create a platform that allows educators to share what they know and what they're doing. And so that's coming later this year. So then, in terms of our professional development, I wanted to just show you what are the most popular courses? What are people taking? And it's really interesting. The first is about your brand, building your brand as an educator. Then the second is assessing creativity. That's challenging. We've talked a little bit about that this week, that we've seen folks who are, have different ideas about how to assess creativity. And then finally, exploring creativity in the classroom. So those are the, the top three, just to give you a sense of what we're working on. I wanted to share an additional kind of learning resource that we created about two years ago. It became really clear to us that we do a good job through Adobe TV, through all of the books and classes, of educating the real experts. Easy enough to find ways that you can learn, you can dive deep into Illustrator or Dreamweaver or any of our tools. What we've learned as we look at the way in which creativity is spreading across schools, the business schools, the sciences, schools of education, they were asking us for how do we engage our faculty? How do we help support them become really great at using digital media to support teaching and learning? So we created this site called Adobe for Academics. And it starts with a use case. It starts with what you want to do. What do you want to do? So instead of saying, here's a lesson about Illustrator. Here's how to get started. Let's dive in and go through all the menus. It really looks at what do you want to do? How can we get you started? These lessons are all designed to be short, to be quick success. You can see how you can search for the lessons by activity or by discipline or by product. But it makes it really easy for someone to just get started in using our tools. And Adobe has also included some fantastic learning resources on, learning resources on the Creative Cloud. And you saw some of these referenced by Paul yesterday. I think Trevor mentioned them as well. But they are really fantastic. They're designed to, be, to get you started in 30 minutes. And they're designed for a beginner. What if, if you've got 30 minutes to learn Photoshop, what do you need to know? They use video really heavily, they're beautiful, they're well designed. The team uses analytics to figure out are they effective, are they having the kind of impact they want or not. So they can tell me how many, where people stop in video and how they should edit it differently the next time around. So this, these are fantastic resources. So you can go in to get, generally get started with products. You can also learn about camera shake reduction, which Trevor mentioned in his talk. You can learn to adjust perspective. So these are designed to be related to things that folks want to do and also just be an easy place to start. So great, great resource to use. I don't know if you recognize any of these faces. Anybody look familiar? Anna definitely knows these folks. I would imagine John Paul knows some of them. These are our Adobe education leaders. These are some of the top educators in the world. We are lucky enough to have had long-term relationships with many of these folks. They speak at conferences, they publish books, they lead other groups, they uh, engage with us in lots of really interesting ways. They review our products, they invade us, they give us all sorts of feedback about the way in which we engage with schools. They're really an amazing group of folks, and from all over the world, from higher education, from K-12 as well. And I think for us, this is a community that we really count on to keep us on, to give us direction, to give us feedback to tell us what they're worried about, what they see coming on the horizon. There are about 250 of them from around the world. We bring them together in San Jose uh, every July. A really great group to meet with and spend some time with. So I look forward to seeing them again soon. They're often far flung, but really phenomenal group. 